All right, what's up everybody? So in today's video, I wanna talk about the logical fallacy that machines are somehow inferior to free weights. This is a debate that's constantly going on where you'll have some people say, free weights are better than machines, they're just overall better, and they come up with these arguments for, for why machines are inferior and you should maybe avoid them or just use them as accessory work. And there's also people like myself where I'll pretty commonly say, machines are equal to, if not better than machines. It's true. And I think if we just keep saying this back and forth, nothing really happens and nobody's perspective really changes. So what I wanna do in this video is not only talk about some of the, what I believe to be logical fallacies of the, of the people that make arguments against machines and in favor of free weights. I also wanna talk a little bit about a new perspective that I've adopted for machines, especially in this past one to two years of my training. And I think it's been a game changer and it's been entirely eye-opening just in terms of what I can do in the gym and the options I have available to build muscle. And when I talk about some of the stuff, I'm hoping it does the same to you guys and it opens your eyes up a little bit to the hidden benefits of some of the machines that you see in the gym. And I think a lot of the stuff is just going kind of unnoticed. And when you can really understand what drives hypertrophy, the world just opens up a ton to you. And I think it makes hypertrophy training not only better in a programming sense, but I also, I also think it makes it better psychologically because you just have more options, you have more novelty, and it keeps it fun for all of us. So uh, I do think that's another important thing. So the first thing that I want to touch on is kind of an introduction to the new mindset that I want to present to you guys that, like I said, I have adopted recently. Is that, And this is that you're training for a stimulus. You're not training for a skill. So when you do a specific lift, you're using that lift to get a stimulus out of that lift. You're not trying to get better at that specific skill. Those are two entirely different things. So outside of recruiting stimulus from a given lift, the skill aspect of a lift simply just doesn't matter if hypertrophy is your goal. When you're training for skill or when you're training for strength, of course that matters. But again, this is just assuming that we're training for strength. So this is a straw man argument that a lot of people that are free weight biased like to project onto somebody like myself or most of you guys watching this video. I don't care at all about my strength. Maybe that's because I'm already strong, so I just don't feel the need to get stronger. But either way, it doesn't really matter. I don't care about strength. If I was pressing the 10 pound dumbbells and I had a chest as big as I have now, I don't care. Like I'll go to the dumbbell section and press the 10 pounders. I just don't really care. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't care to lift heavy. It's just... It's just, it, it is what it is. Not everybody's like that. And you don't have to be, but I'm just saying I, I'm not the only one that's like that. So when it comes to selecting a lift that is good for hypertrophy, I think it comes down to two main factors outside of things like personal preference and working around injuries and stuff. I think in a perfect world that I think most people are in, generally speaking, lift mechanics and stability are the top two priorities when you're selecting a lift for hypertrophy. So what I mean by this is how stable is the lift? Are you on a BOSU ball doing squats? Because you could have good lift mechanics squatting on a BOSU ball, but it's not very stable, so it's hard to generate enough force. Then again, with lift mechanics, this is also important because you could be on a very stable leg press, and that's great, but if your setup is terrible and you can't get good depth, it's no longer that good of a lift, at least in my opinion. So Lift mechanics mostly comes down to what muscle are you targeting? Is that muscle the prime mover? What uh, position of that muscle is biased? Is it lengthened biased, mid-range biased, short-range biased? And do you get a weighted stretch at all in that movement? That's another factor to take into consideration. So between the lift mechanics and the stability, those are kind of the two things that are going to set you up for your hypertrophy stimulus. And once you have that, it doesn't really matter what you're using as long as you have those two things covered. So does this mean that all free weights are bad because they're not as stable as machines? No, because free weights can be pretty stable. Like if you're doing a barbell squat, standing on flat ground with squat shoes on, that's pretty stable. That's not, there's not really an issue with that. Is that as stable as a pendulum squat or a hack squat? No. Can you bias the, the tension curve as much as you can on say a, a hack squat or a pendulum squat? No. And that's another downside to free weights. So I think the lift mechanics and I think stability are two of the most important things to look at when you're considering an exercise to put in your program. Uh, and those are two things that I definitely do take into consideration personally uh, all the time for basically every lift. There are a couple common arguments against machines 
and I believe that these are rooted in emotion or just logical fallacies. And I know there's people out there that just abuse logical fallacies uh, if they were to put themselves in my shoes and just say, oh, well, this can technically be a logical fallacy because this, this, and this. I'm not someone that's just going to use logical fallacies to, to try and like debunk quote unquote people. Uh, I don't like to do that all the time, but I do think in this case, uh, these do line up pretty well, and I'm entirely open to discussion on this stuff. By no means is this the end all be all, but I do want to point out a couple of things that I'm constantly hearing about the argument against machines in favor of free weights. So the first one would be, you can't train hard on machines. I see this all the time. I see this especially on Instagram where people debate like pull-ups versus lat pull-downs or leg press versus squats. They just say with nothing to back it up that you can just magically somehow train harder with free weights. I disagree with this entirely. I think, first off, I don't really think it matters how like what piece of equipment you're using for how hard you can train. I think there are some benefits that machines do have over free weights, but I don't think free weights are so bad to where you just can't magically, somehow you can't train hard enough to build muscle. So I do think that when people say you can't train hard on machines, I think that's an appeal to emotion because when they're saying you can't train hard, what they mean is a feeling. Do you feel like you're training hard on a machine? Not all the time. When I train with free weights, I feel like I'm training harder. Am I training harder? Most of the time, no, because the definition of training hard when it comes to the context of hypertrophy is how close can you take that muscle to failure? What is the closest proximity to failure you need to get to or that you could get to? And in most cases, I'm not going to dive into each one, the machine lets you go closer to failure with that target muscle because you can manipulate the tension curve, you can manipulate your range of motion, and you can bias your entire setup to target that muscle perfectly. So what are machines doing? They're literally designed and they're engineered to take that target muscle to the closest proximity to failure you can, generally safely as long as you're using the machine properly. With free weights, you're relying on a few other factors that do come into play, like your general core strength or stability. You're relying on your own psychological willpower to maybe keep yourself upright on a quad bias squat that a machine, you wouldn't have to do that with. So machines, generally speaking, will let you train a little bit closer to failure. I don't think this is a make or break, but I do think machines have an edge, especially for like intermediate, late intermediate, advanced, and especially elite natural lifters. There's definitely benefit of machines. So now that we've kind of determined what training hard, quote unquote, means, what these people mean when they say train hard is how hard do you feel like you're working? Are you out of breath? Are you sweating? Are you like kind of shaking because you had to stabilize your squat? I've done everything, guys, like not everything, but I've trained on pretty much every piece of equipment that I've had access to. And I've been to 10 different gyms for a long time. So I've done the low bar squats, I've done the high bar squats, front squats, every leg machine imaginable. Low bar squats and high bar squats, free weights feel harder because you have to stabilize more. You have to recruit more that's outside of the target muscle. And this isn't always in a hypertrophy context. This is a lot of the time just stabilizing a specific movement and you won't really get much hypertrophy from it. Like when you're barbell squatting, you have to keep your core a bit more stable. You have to use your spinal erectors and they don't always get growth depending on the squat that you're using. And it's stuff like that, that accumulates a bit more fatigue, accumulates a lot more systemic fatigue, and you just feel like you put in more work. But in reality, when you're talking about training hard to that muscle you're trying to target, there's not much of a difference. And it actually does, in my opinion, bias machines a little bit more ironically. So I think their argument that you can't train hard on machines isn't just incorrect. I actually think it's the other way around. And I'm up to debate on this, like I like basically anything I say on this channel, but I think I just made a pretty good case that you could like train a little bit harder on machines, even if, if it doesn't feel like you're training quite as hard. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got for today. So I think I covered all my points there. If you guys have any thoughts or any questions or anything, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to go through and respond to the some of the more interesting ones. So if you have any thoughts or anything on this topic, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video.